Bears for the Arts is very proud to have our live stream back. We are very proud tonight to have How to Turn Your Blog into a Book Production Machine. We have Miss Nina Amir with us. Nina, you are a best-selling author of such books as The Author Training Manual and How to Blog Your Book. Very happy to have you here. Thank you. It's an right. honor. Take it away. Okay. So welcome, everyone, to our live stream and to those who are here live. Welcome. We are going to be talking about how to turn your blog into a book production machine. And I'm just going to take a minute to just say that there was a time when there were tons and tons of book deals going to bloggers. Bloggers were seen as uh, successful bloggers, were seen as people who had already test marketed a book idea. And so I saw that and I decided, you know, this is a really good idea, but why don't we write our books on our blogs? And that was when I started my blog called How to Blog a Book. And How to Blog a Book, basically there I blogged a book for about five months on How to Blog a Book. And it took off. It wasn't viral like some. I had to actually pitch my book idea to an agent and then a publisher, but it ended up published. And so I took that experience and said, you know, this is a really good thing to do on a regular basis because a lot of people are blogging and they don't have time to write books. So this is where the idea came from. So I thought I would just start with that. Now, the problem that I see most often is that most writers just want to write. They don't want to do social media. They don't want to blog. They just want to sit and write. They shy away from everything else. They don't want to do the promotion. Right? And promotion is key because even if you get a publishing deal, publishers don't promote for you very much. So no matter how you publish, self-publish, traditionally published, you're going to be doing the promotion. The majority of writers don't want to do that. And a blog is partly promotion. Actually, it's a big part promotion. So bloggers, on the other hand, they write and promote all the time. Every time they write a blog post, they're promoting it on social media. They don't just leave it on their blog hoping that people will come, like Field of Dreams, right? They don't do that. They write blog posts and then they put them up on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, wherever, and share them. So they are promoting every time they publish a blog post. But the problem for bloggers is that they tend to feel overwhelmed by the idea of writing a book rather than a blog post because they're used to writing short. Most blog posts historically have been from 300 to, let's say, 1,000 words in length. There was a time when they were 200 words, like that was all you needed. These days, some bloggers are blogging longer and seeing more engagement. But in general, bloggers are writing short. They're not writing a 50,000-word book. And so for them, the idea of a book is overwhelming. The easiest way that I have found to write your book and promote it at the same time is to blog a book. And I'll explain what I mean by that. But that is the easiest way to write a book and promote it at the same time. The easiest way to write your book and to do so quickly and easily, if you have a long-standing blog, so let's say you've been blogging for five, ten years, is to do what we call book your blog. This is a, a phrase that was uh, coined by my colleague Joel Friedlander. I like to give him credit. But so you would book your blog if you've been blogging for a while rather than blog a book, although you could blog your book on an existing blog. So let's talk about the difference between the two. When you blog a book, you're intentionally writing a book from scratch on the internet in post-size bits using a content plan. So when you blog a book, you're intentionally writing a book from scratch. Okay, so you create a plan, as I said, and you're publishing post-size bits of your blog. So you've created the plan, and then you have these blog post pieces of each chapter, and that's what's going up on your blog. If you book a blog, you're repurposing existing blog content that's originally been written on the internet with no thought of creating a book. So what I mean by that is you've had a blog up for maybe five, ten years and you've just been blogging. Maybe you are blogging on one topic. That's awesome. But you didn't think about writing a book and then suddenly you go, oh look, I have all this content and guess what? I have a lot of readers. I should create a book. All those people, they got book deals. Maybe I can get a book deal, or maybe I can just self-publish a book based on my blog. But the problem is that those posts were not written with a book in mind. Whereas in the first case, if you blog a book, they're being written and published with a book in mind. Okay, here's the thing. If you want to become an author, you need a blog. Now, a lot of writers, like I said, they don't want to blog. They say, I want to write my book. I don't want to be writing something else. But you need a blog because a blog is a website. And you, as an author or aspiring author, you need a website of your own. It's your, it's your home in cyberspace. So 
So when somebody puts in your name, you want them to show up at your website. You don't want them to necessarily go to Facebook or somewhere else. That may come up too when they do a Google search for you. But you want them to go to your website. So the blog, it's a content management system. That's what a website is. Website software is content management. That's all it is, a content management system. So a blog is the same thing, except that it has the ability for you to publish content on a regular basis, okay? So eventually when your book is out, your, your blog is gonna be your storefront out there on the internet, right? So whatever you're selling, whether it's just your books or whether it's courses or services or coaching services, consulting, whatever it is, you're selling it from your website. Okay, and that website is, has a blog. Now, that blog then becomes your author website. You want to spend some time thinking about it. You know, who am I as, who I, how do I want to be known as a writer, as an author, so that when people show up, they know who you are and what you offer them. It is also the home base for all your platform and promotion activities. So, when I say that, I'm going to explain what platform means, but Basically, every time you put that blog post up, you publish a blog post, you are going to be promoting. You're going to share. Not only that, it's going to have search engine optimization. You know, it's going to have keywords in it. And so it immediately begins to promote you. But you're going to be using that content as the foundation for your social media and everything else you're doing. So it's important to think about that because if you're writing nonfiction, you want to be an expert or an authority. And so you're putting out content that makes you that. I was not the expert on blogging books. Was not an expert on blogging, wasn't an expert on promotion until I started a blog called How to Blog a Book. And in five months, I had number one uh, search engine optimization, uh, search engine page status. So when you put something into Google, saying how to blog a book, blog a book, blog to book deals, I came up first. And that's visibility, that's uh, discoverability. And that's what we're looking for. And that made me an expert. Suddenly people were seeking me out to speak on these topics. So that's what you're trying to do with your, with your blog. Okay, so what is a platform and why do you need one? You need people to know who you are. In order to sell books successfully, you need what's called a built-in readership for your book. And that is a platform. You need an audience that's waiting for you to hold up your book and say, here it is buy it for me. If you don't have that, then there's nobody there to promote to. That's what I always say. If you don't have a platform, who are you promoting to? Because you need to have that audience. So platform is a built-in readership for your book, as I said. Now, how is that created? It's created first with visibility. So the more often that you publish a blog post and share it on social media, the more visible you become. Also, the more you blog, the more visible you become. So as I said, I was blogging three to four times a week on how to blog a book and the more often I published those posts the more keywords there were for Google to to check out right so Google sends bots and crawlers automated programs to index your content what it's doing is it's trying to figure out what your site is about so the more often you publish a blog post the more often Google comes along and says oh okay that's what it's about especially if you're writing on one topic. So the more often you do that, the more visible you become. You, ri you rise up in the search engine results pages. But also the more you share your content, the more visible you're gonna become on Facebook or Twitter or wherever you're sharing it. Then there's reach. So when you share your blog post and somebody says, oh, that's cool, let me share it with my buddies, that's reach. If I'm at a, in a room like this and somebody decides to tweet what I'm saying, that's reach. Because here I am speaking to you, and somebody in the room shares with a bunch of people I don't know. They share to their Facebook account something I said, or to Twitter something I said. I don't know any of those people, but now they know me. That's reach. So it was what I've said has left the room and gone out to Twitter or Facebook, right? So we want that to happen. We want what we share to go beyond our circle of friends. Then there's authority, and there's this funny thing that happens, and that's when you have visibility and you have reach, you begin to be seen as an authority. So as I said, I wasn't the authority on blogging books until I blogged a book, until that's all I wrote about for four to five months. Then suddenly I was the authority, and it's because my blog posts were visible, my site was visible, and people were sharing the posts. 
and that made you know somebody sharing your stuff they say oh well that must be someone you know who, who knows something who's an expert and if you're writing nonfiction as I said this is what you want to have happen you want to be seen as an expert so we call this actually authority blogging and then there's influence and when you have visibility reach and authority people begin to listen to you right they start to trust you and to see you as that uh, person they go to when they need information when that happens you're influential and that means that when you hold up your book and you say I just published this would you go buy it they're paying attention when somebody's influential in your life don't you pay attention to what they say if they're not influential then you don't so we want to have influence with our target market so as I said, without an author platform, your book promotion activities are going to be pretty ineffective because there's no one there to promote to. So we want to be building platform, and that's a whole part of this. Your blog is a book production machine. You need that to happen. All right, so let's talk about what you need to do if you want to blog a book. There's six things you need to do before. The first one is to choose a subject. And I always say that sounds kind of silly. Choose a subject. And you're thinking, you know, well, I have a subject. What do you mean choose a subject? Well, when I started how to blog a book, I already had four other blogs. But I thought this was a cool idea. And it was. But after five months of blogging and I had my first draft done of the book, I kind of was like, I'm done. And I tapered off from, from publishing posts three to four times a week to publishing once every couple, every couple weeks. And what do you think happened to the traffic I'd built? It went down. So. I realized, which I actually knew this, it was just, I was just done. I was like, okay, I'm done. I said everything I have to say. But to have that blog be successful, I needed to keep blogging. So when I say choose a subject, what I really want to say is choose a subject you can write about for a long time. Because a blog is not a once and done thing. It's a continual process. And the blogs that are most successful, you'll see they are blogging at a minimum once a week. And that's usually after they've gotten established. So choose your subject carefully. Then what you need to do is create a business plan for your book. A business plan for a book is a book proposal. But you may be self-publishing, you may just be thinking about your blog and blogging a book, and you don't know how you're going to publish. But the fact is that you need a business plan because you need to discover whether or not this blog and this book idea are marketable. Because if it's not going to sell, you have no impact. And I would bet everyone who wants to write a book wants to have impact with their readers. So we need to know that it's a marketable book, that it's the best idea we can produce. Okay, so this is when most people's eyes glaze over. Um, Ted Koppel calls it the Miko factor, my eyes glaze over, because most writers don't want to think about business. And I get that, because neither did I. So as I said, this is a book proposal, but we're not going to use it that way. We're going to use it as a business plan because a book proposal is a business plan for a book and a publisher is going to ask you to produce a business plan because they want to know if your book will sell. They want to know whether they can make any money. And you need to know when you start a book on a blog whether or not this is going to make you some money, especially if it's going to be the main concept of the blog. Now later on we're going to talk about blogging many, many books on one blog. But I want you to just keep thinking, is this a good book idea? How can I make it better? And a business plan is going to help you do that. For the main reason that I've already said is that it creates, it's going to help you decide whether it's going to sell. And that means that it's going to get read. So when you use the business plan correctly, it's going to help you evaluate your idea for its marketability and craft a book that sells. You're going to write the best book you can because you're going to have studied your market and your competition and all kinds of things. So we've got... Step one and step two here, for anyone who is wondering how to do that, my book, The Author Training Manual, is all about this, about how to create a business plan for a book. So once you have studied your market, which is one part of the, the plan, once you've studied the competition, you can begin to hone your subject. So let me explain what I mean. The competition is going to, when you go look at the other books that have been published on your topic, what you're going to discover is what's been done well and what hasn't been done well what they left out, what they didn't leave out, what maybe you should include that they included. So this is a way for you to just begin to see what's already out there and how to perfect your idea, to make it better. With the market, of course, you need to know who your readers are and what they really need. Also, this is an idea of looking at the category where your book will be placed, meaning is it going to be in business? Is it going to be in self-help? Is it going to be in 
you know, health and fitness or something. So when you are looking at the category, you want to see what's missing. And when you start looking at the competition that's out there, you'll begin to see that. You'll start to find holes on the bookstore shelf in, in the actual bookstore, right? You're going to say, oh, my book should fit right here. There's nothing like that, right? So that's what you're trying to do. Once you have honed your subject using all this information, okay, so you're going to take all that information and you're going to say, how do I make my book idea better? How do I perfect it? How do I make it as saleable as it can be? How can I make it as necessary as possible for my readers and in the marketplace? Then you map out your book's content. So you're going to actually create your outline for your book, your table of contents, maybe even some chapter summaries, but you're gonna decide about all the content that's going in your book. And then you're gonna break it into post-sized pieces. What I mean by that is that it, they're gonna be the size of a blog post. So how long is that? Well. It used to be blog posts could be 150 to 200 words. Then Google came up with a new algorithm and said, no, we need 300 words. Then who knows what happened? These days, most people say 300 words and up, okay? I recommend that you write between 500 and 750 words. Why? Because I still don't believe that people have time to read long at this point. I think that we're looking for short things, especially online to read. And I want you writing more frequently. The reason for that is the more often you publish a blog post, the more often Google comes along and indexes it. So if you were to write a blog post uh, three times a week, let's say, and publish it, that's going to give you more traction, more keywords for Google to index. You're going to rise up in the search engine results pages a lot faster. Okay? Now, there are some studies that say that longer posts are getting more engagement these days, meaning a post that's maybe... 1,200, 1,500 words, 2,000 words. But this is where the writers start saying, I just want to write my book. Now, you are writing your book, but I don't want you to serialize your book. I don't want you to write an entire chapter and publish it. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about taking a chapter and saying, okay, I have, you know, 10 pieces in here. So nonfiction is the easiest thing to do this with, okay? There are novelists and memoirists who are blogging books. But if you just take a nonfiction chapter as an example, the nonfiction chapter is going to be broken into subheadings, into sections, right? Each one of those sections can be a blog post. 300 is the baseline for, for Google. So I, I never publish a post that is less than 300 words. I'm usually aiming for 500 to 600 with 750 the max. That doesn't mean that some of my posts aren't 1,000 words or 1,200 words, but I don't usually go over that. It's if the content needs that, and some posts just need more. But if you're getting to 3,000 words, you might as well write two posts. If you're getting to, you know, 1,500 words, you could do a two-part post, right? And you could have 750 words. So I want you writing more often. So shorter to me is better. I'd rather you wrote three posts a week at 600 words or 500 words than one at 1,500. And while they're saying that you get more engagement, usually meaning more sharing, not necessarily comments. Everybody's always wanting comments. Comments come when you have more traffic. The more people visiting your blog, the more comments you're going to get. So comments are long time in coming. You might have some really steady readers who give you comments, but in general, it doesn't happen so much until you have a lot of traffic. But sharing sometimes happens more with longer posts. That's what we're seeing. But when you're blogging books, recommend. And it's not my experience. My experience is the more often I blog and consistently, meaning I publish on a schedule. I have a blog post that comes out on Monday on one blog. I have one that comes out on Tuesday. One that comes out on Wednesday. Now, I blog once a week now. So if you were to go to look at my site, you'll see I blog once a week. But that's after years of blogging. I started my blog, Write Nonfiction Now, with five posts a week. For 10 months, I did that. Okay. Then I taper it off to three posts a week, then two posts a week, and now one post a week. So as you get traffic, you can taper off. Now, important point here, number six, is to decide what content you're going to leave unpublished. You've planned out your whole book. You have your table of contents. You know what's going in every chapter. And now you've broken it down into these post-sized bits. You've said, okay, you know, this chapter is ten posts. But I don't want you to publish everything. Not everything. Because... If you were to get a traditional publishing deal, they want new content. Content. The publisher wants some new content. They don't want to publish exactly what's on your blog. So know that you're going to revise. This is a first draft. 
maybe it's a second or third draft because you're editing and revising before you publish, right? But we're not looking for the final draft. When I finished how to blog a book, of course, I was the guinea pig. What I realized was that I had actually blogged about half the book, and I didn't know that. I thought I was pretty much done. I had chapters out. I had decided that was my my content that would go, you know, be new for the published book. But when I started to revise my draft, I realized how much I'd left out. That's why I say plan. Plan carefully because it's better to know what's going in there and then be able to decide this is what's not going in. If you self-publish, you could put everything on the blog, but I think it's an incentive for readers to know that there's new content coming. Okay, so that's why we plan and then we decide what content goes on the blog and which stays unpublished off the blog until the book comes out. If you were to plan a book, it would look kind of like this. Okay, you'd have your book title or subject, and you would have, this is just one chapter, you'd have a chapter, and for each of the chapters, and again, this is um, non uh, we're looking at something that would be nonfiction, you would have a subheading or a blog post title, because each one of those subheadings in your chapter is going to be a blog post. So you can just give it a title. That title might stay as your subheading. Okay? And then each one of those sections might actually have more blog posts. So let's say you have, what do we have here, one, two, three, four, five um, subheadings in your book chapter. Each one of those could have three, four, or five different blog posts, depending on how long the chapter was. If you were doing fiction, which again, I think it's much harder to do to blog a novel, but I have novelists who told me it made them better writers because they had to get their readers to go from blog post to blog post to blog post. So they actually had an arc to every blog post to keep the reader hanging and moving into the next piece. But majority of people blogging books are blogging nonfiction. Okay, but if you wanted to do a, fic a novel, you would have your chapter. You would have maybe a scene. That scene might be your blog post title or your blog post, right, with a title. So you give that scene a name. Then that scene might actually consist of more blog posts just because of how long it is. So you might have a blog post that's just the description. You might have an introduction of a character, then the introduction of another character. Then you might have a dialogue between the two characters, right? Then maybe something happens, somebody dies or gets killed, and then the police show up. So you could see where you would, you would create different blog posts related to what's happening in the novel. Okay? Again, it's a little harder, but it's a way for you to, as I said, create an arc. You can create a book that is carrying your readers forward all the time because you have to do that. Because as you're publishing blog posts, you want them to keep reading. With nonfiction, they could stop. They could go, oh, I got, okay, the information I needed was in that blog post. Maybe they did a Google search, show up at your site, and they have this, this one blog post that answers their question, and then they go away. Of course, you want them to want to come back. So leading them on in, in that case is also a good thing to say, well, there's going to be more information, or the next post has more information. But with a novel, you're going to carry them along just by the, the action of the book. Okay, so a lot of people ask me, how long will it take you to blog your book? That depends on something. First, it depends on the length of your book, okay? A longer book takes longer time. Also, the duration of your book blogging project. How many weeks or months do you plan to blog your book? When I started how to blog a book, I didn't know. I had it all planned out. I thought I had it mostly planned out, and I blogged for five months. You could decide I'm gonna blog for five months or six months. The longer you blog, the more likelihood of gaining readership. If you only blog a short book, let's say you blog a book that's um, 2,000 words, maybe it's a really mini book, right? It's not going to take you very long. Four, five hundred word posts and you're done. That's not going to build you an audience. It's not going to create the platform you want, which is what I discovered with how to blog a book. That's why I said I didn't get discovered by a publisher. I had to approach, I actually had a literary agent, but I had to poach my agent with a proposal and send it out to publishers because I didn't have the traffic I needed. If I had planned my book better, I could have blogged for twice as long and I would have had twice as much traffic, maybe even more. Okay, so, so you can decide, I'm going to blog for nine months. And then you look at your content and you say, how do I divvy this up so that it's nine months worth of content? The other thing to think about is how many blog posts a week you want to publish. Writers are going, I just want to write my book. But if you're blogging the book and you were writing every day, you might be able to write five posts a week. If, on the other hand, you have a full-time job and you're doing other things and this is a side hustle for you or side gig, 
you might say, well, you know, I can only publish one post a week. That's it. However many posts you publish, that's the duration. If you want to have blogged a book and you're only blogging one blog post a week, it'll take you a lot longer than if you say, in a year I'm going to have my book done and you're only, you know, and you're you're publishing three posts a week. So these are decisions you make and that's how you decide. The other thing is you could start with an estimated word count. You could say, I have this many words, so let's say a 50,000 word book, that's a typical nonfiction book, traditionally published or even self-published nonfiction book, about 50,000 words to 75,000 words, okay? You could divide that by the average number of words of your blog post. So I'm not a mathematician, but you can sure you all can do it. You know, if you had 50,000 words and each post was 1,000 words, you'd have 50 posts, right? You can see how you could take that information and you could figure out how many posts you're going to write. Now, you could also look at the number of posts divided by the number of months you plan to blog the book. If you have 100 posts and you plan to finish the book in six months, how many posts would you need? If your book is 20,000 words, and you write posts that average 600 words, you're going to need to write 33 posts. Now that's a short book, but that's a good size for, a, for an ebook. An ebook that's 10 to 30,000 words is a nice sized ebook. When you're getting up there to 20, 30,000 words, that's a, that's a pretty hefty little ebook. Not talking about necessarily a, a paperback turned into an ebook, but just a straight ebook. Okay, so that gives you an idea. If you want to complete that blog book in six months, you're going to need to write five to six posts per month if you were writing the 20,000 word book with 600 words per post. You can also start with the length of your book blogging period. You could blog for 12 months and write two posts per week. If I'm going to do it that way, I need 104 blog posts. 104 blog posts times the average 600 words per post, just, this is just an average we came up with, right, is 62,400 words of a manuscript. And that is minus your unpublished content. So now you're saying, okay, but is my unpublished content going to, you know, now is now my book getting huge, right? Maybe I need to scale back just a little bit so that I end up with a 70,000 word book or whatever. How long should it take you to blog your book? Well, you're going to blog until you build platform, preferably. That's why I said longer is better. Five months for me wasn't really enough. Now, you can have a topic that goes viral and three months is enough. Just because it's getting shared, you're getting lots of visibility. Um, that's when, you know, when, a, when a blog starts and three months later it's viral, you know, and it's just got amazing traffic. And that's when a publisher comes along and says, hey, we want to offer you a book deal. But for most of us, that doesn't happen. So we're going to figure out a length of time so that we actually build some platform. And as I said, in five months, I had not really built the amount of platform I needed. You can also just blog until you finish your book. And we're going to talk about short books, how to produce lots of books on your blog. That's why I said a book production machine. So you could, I've written books in six weeks. I've written books on my blog in four weeks. I've written books on my blog, you know, over the course of a couple months. It just depends. But the point is that you're going to build platform. You want to be getting this audience in your target market. Okay, and that should happen naturally. So for those of you writing nonfiction, if you're blogging on one topic all the time or a couple very related topics, Google's gonna begin to get it very quickly. Like for me, all I blogged about on that particular blog, how to blog a book, was how to blog a book, how to blog a book, blogging a book, blog to book deals, book bloggers, blogging books, how to blog a book, how to blog a book, how to blog a book, and Google figured it out. Four and a half, five months, number one search engine result status. So the more you can do that, the better. And I will admit that I was lucky nobody else was really writing about this. So it was just me for the most part. Okay, But you still can make your own little niche, get your own little take on a topic, and do the same thing. So let's talk about blogging short books, lots of them. Because what I want for all of you is to be churning out books on your blog. That's why I call this how to turn your blog into a book production machine. Because I want you to blog lots of books. You can blog a short series, 10 to 30 blog posts. Anyone can do that. If you can write, you can do that. I always talk about dog training books. So let's say that's your subject area, is dog training. You could blog a, a series of 10 blog posts on how to train your dog without using treats. Because most people use treats to train their dogs, right? So maybe you have a new way of doing it that doesn't require treats. And you would have this little ebook that you could produce. Matter of fact, you could even do a bunch of, you know, maybe... 10 series like that, create 10 little ebooks, and then you can put them all together and you'd have a big book. So as I said, you can turn it into an ebook and then you rinse and repeat. And if you were to do, let's say, a series of 10 
little ebooks of 10 to 15, 20 posts, you then could create not just an ebook, but a print book. And you could use the same strategy and say, you know, these are my chapters or these are ebooks, and then I'm just going to bundle them and sell them bundled. There are lots of ways to do this, but the idea is that if you start putting short books together, more books. And the more books you publish, the more books you sell. It's called the long tail effect. You saw that, I think it was in the music industry. So basically the idea is, you know, you might write one book, eh, it sells a few. You write another book, it sells a little bit more. You write a third book, eh, it doesn't sell so well. You write the fourth book and it hits. And you sell a lot of copies and then all your books take off. And I see this right now, I'm doing a promotion. Um, in November, I, write, I run an event called Write Nonfiction in November. It's kind of like National Novel Writing Month, but for nonfiction writers and a lot smaller. But we write books in 30 days. This is a great time to blog a book. But we also are offering my series of guidebooks, the Write Nonfiction Now Guide series. We're offering a book every couple days free. And as that book goes free, my other book sales go up. Because people are looking at that going, oh, she wrote these other books. Maybe I'll buy one of those. So that's the idea here, okay? So we want to rinse and repeat this idea over and over again. How to blog a book was blogged. I blogged that, as I said, the initial draft of that was blogged in four and a half, five months. I also blogged the nonfiction book proposal, uh, Demystified. Um, that sat on my blog for quite a long time, but it was a series, and every once in a while I would publish a post in that series. And then when I was all done, I went, oh, you know what? It's a book, because it was, it was this series. Um, blogging basics for authors. I did that, I think, over three months or something, where every, every, I can't remember now exactly how often I published, but it was always a tip. And it would say, blogging basics for authors. You know, tip number five. And I built them up until I had enough for a book. Authorpreneur, the same way. I actually started that, I think, in um, April or May of one year when I actually asked bloggers to blog a book in a month. Okay, so we had, we had National Book Blogging Month, or National Nonfiction Writing Month, and I produced that. And those are all ebooks. Oh, and by the way, I just published a new one in the series, the Write Nonfiction Now um, Guide series, and that one's on virtual book tours. I wrote that five, six years ago. It's been sitting on my blog. My literary agent said, where's your book for this year? Because I always do an ebook every year before November. I said, ah, I got one, pulled it out. I added a few guest bloggers to it, added a little bit of new content, and I had a book. This is what I want for you. I want you to be able to go to your blog all the time and say, there's a book here. So four things you need to do before you book a blog. So now we're back to somebody who has an existing blog. Maybe you've been blogging for two, five, 10, 15 years. You have all this content. The first thing you're going to do is create the best possible book. What happens is people, bloggers, will say, I have all this content, I'm going to just pull these posts off and make them into a book. But it wasn't intended for a book, and it doesn't read like a book. It's not the best book. I want you to go through the same process and plan out the best book you can, the most marketable book you can. You look at the competition, all those things, figure out how to create the best book. Not the one that's easiest to compile from your existing posts. Okay, let's not take the, the lazy man's route. We're going to do this the right way. So again, you're going to create a business plan for the book. You're going to stu study the market. You're going to study the competition. You're going to think about the benefits your book has. You're going to hone and craft until you have the idea for the best book you can write. Then you're going to map out that book's content. The reason I always say map rather than plan is because I like mind maps. So I tend to map it out. You could just do an outline. It's fine. Whatever works for you to know the structure of your book, your table of contents, and all the content, and we'll go in each one of those chapters. So if you're outlining, you want to be sure it's a detailed outline, okay? It doesn't just have a chapter name. It's going to say way more than that. Then, when you have this idea of what's going to go in the book, not just an idea, you actually have created an outline of what's going in the book, you're going to go to your blog, your existing blog, and look for existing posts, posts you've published. You're going to start dropping them in to your content plan. What's going to happen is you're going to have a bunch of content and then gaps where there is no, no, inform no posts you've written. Okay, So that's when you have to fill in the content gaps with new material. That new material could be your new material for your book. Maybe it never shows up on the blog. But maybe there's enough that you feel the need to write some blog posts. But typically what I find is people will pull blog posts from their blog, put it into the plan, and then begin to write the manuscript. Filling, editing, and revising, because remember that content wasn't meant for a book, and then, then writing the new content as well. Okay, so that would look a bit like this. Come up with the best book you can write, you have your outline. 
okay? You know exactly what's going in there. Then you have to go search out posts. So you can look in your, if your blog has categories, you can search out, search through the categories. Categories are like your filing system. You might have the dog training without treats. Then you might have dog training off the leash. Then you might have uh, dogs who chew beds. I don't think my kids' dogs always chew their beds. <laughs> Anyway, you could see where you would have different topics in your filing cabinet, different files, right? So that's categories. Tags. Just like keywords, we tag our blog posts with different words. So it might be treats, leash, whatever, right? So these are the keywords. So you can actually, I, I use WordPress. So in WordPress, like most other blogging platforms, you can actually go in and search through your tags. And, and it'll tell you, bring you up all the content that you wrote with those tags. You can do a Google site search. So you can actually go to Google and search your site for terms, for keywords, and it'll come up. You could do your own site search. So if you have a search engine, which you should on your website, you could search by keywords. So leash, you could just search for leash. See all the blog posts that come up with that word. Then what's gonna happen is you're gonna have this. So again, you have the best book you can write, you have your chapters, you have the points you want to make in each chapter, and now you've written down a URL for your published blog post and a post title. Now you know where to find that post and you know what you have, but notice the gaps. That's where you're missing information because you didn't just go to the blog and grab a bunch of blog posts, you actually planned out a book, the best book you can write, and now you know what still needs to be written. So these are some other books that I have blogged. 10 Days and 10 Ways to Return Your Best Self. I blogged that over 10 days. It is a tiny little book. It's about this big. It fits in a shirt pocket or in a woman's purse because it's meant to be used for 10 days. These other ones, they, they were actually compiled from blog posts that were on, on my blog. They were not meant to be books, but I went through, I searched out the blog posts, I had a lot of guest bloggers who had written on topics, and these became the series of guides. And I told you I just published a new one. Every year I publish one. I just want to mention this, it's big and red, because if you decide to publish with Amazon Kindle Select, so if, if you don't understand, we have Amazon Kindle, which is the ebook. So we have Create Space, which is a print book. And we have the ebook publishing on Amazon. You don't have to do everything on Amazon, but a lot of people do. So on Amazon, if you're going to do an ebook, you have Kindle and you have Kindle Select. Kindle Select requires you to not have your book for sale anywhere else. And in fact, they don't want the content available anywhere else. What happens if you publish on Kindle is even if you just do a straight Kindle book, Kindle will usually shut you down initially. When you say, I want to publish this book, you hit the publish button, it'll say, no, it, it's going to come back along the, it doesn't publish immediately, they have to approve it. In the approval process, they're going to shut it down and authors get very scared because they're going to say, this content exists on the internet. You can't publish it. Really what they're trying to do is to figure out whether it's for sale and if it's your content. This is actually protection for you because they want to make sure that you're not stealing content that's out there on the internet that's not yours. Once they validate that it's your information and that it's not a book for sale, it's just blogged content, they approve it and it goes through. So just know that because it's mostly the Kindle Select program that's the problem. Don't hit publish if you're in a hurry and expect your blog book to go through right away because more often than not, this is what will happen, okay? So I just like to mention that because I get a lot of calls from or you know comments on my blog saying, wow, oh, they did not let me publish because it's blog content. No, they will. Just give it a little while. Another question I get a lot is can any blog become a book? And what I always say is no, not every blog can become a book because they weren't written as books and some of them don't deserve to be books. It has to be a viable book proposition. So if you were going to traditionally publish, as I said, you would actually submit this business plan to a publisher or to an agent first and then a publisher, right? And that book proposal or business plan is looked at by a team of experts to see whether it's viable. Is it something worth publishing? If it's not, then they don't publish it. You really need to see the big picture. You have to see the big picture of your book, and that means doing that business plan, okay? And if you're looking at your blog, it's the same. You know, is my blog content something that's viable as a book, or is it not? Because not everything is worth being a book. So the final step in all of this is the promotion part. You really have to tell everybody about it. Every time you publish a blog post, you have to tell everybody that you have a blog post. So that means that you have to use every resource. You could use Twitter, you could use Facebook, you could use Instagram, you can use uh, LinkedIn, you can do Facebook Live, you can do YouTube Live, but you have to tell people you've published a blog post. If you don't do that, nothing happens. It takes a long time to be found. 
So I said, it's not like Field of Dreams. If you build it, they will come. They won't. You have to invite them. So you have to stop being that writer. Remember I said the writers don't want to promote. You have to stop being that. Bloggers promote every time they publish a blog post. But if you're blogging books, you're not only blogging and promoting, you're writing a book. So what happens when you finish blogging a book? Let's say you start out like me with how to blog a book. And you blog your whole book and then you're like, okay, I'm done, which is what I did. And then my traffic started to go away, but I was done. That wasn't a plan for long-term. I said, be careful about picking your topic. This is a long-term venture, not one and done. So you have to think about the plan for the long-term. I have somebody right now blogging a book and he's blogging snippets of chapters. And I said to him, what are you gonna do when you run out of snippets from your chapters? Like he's condensing the chat, you know, parts of the chapter into, into blog posts. And, you know, we've had to look at it. It's actually a book on a specific type of car. And so now we've started to look for other experts, for other stories, for ways to tie into to the cars and other, you know, so that he has more content. Because once he's done with the book, something else has to happen on this blog. It can't just stop. The readers go away. So you're gonna keep on blogging. Remember this guy? Keep on keep on trucking guy you're gonna keep on blogging and you're gonna keep on blogging and you keep on blogging until you just you know till you're done but hopefully you're not done because the more the longer you blog the more traffic you get the more success you can get out of this I also always get asked this what if you already have a book so I threw this in here because I knew somebody would ask it what if you're right if you have a book and you want to blog about your book you don't want to blog a book you want to blog about it you're going to determine your topic again you have a book it's on a topic is that what your blog is going to be about that topic or is this just one of the topics hopefully you can hone it down to something that's related to this book there are people who write a lot of different books but we have to find a thread that runs through them so that a blog has a topic has a theme then you're going to determine those themes so you have a topic and you determine the themes in that topic. So that could be if you have, you know, doing dog training, you know, dog training is your topic, but you might have the theme of, um, maybe we should go with horsemanship. So you, maybe you have a blog about horses and you're, you know, you have one theme which is natural horsemanship, right? So we're going the natural route, that's one theme. Maybe it's the only theme. You might also have something related to, um, I had an old client, who she did natural horsemanship and she also talked about um, essential oils and how to use them with horses. But it's relating to a natural path with a horse. So these are your themes. And then again, you're gonna create a plan. I'm a big one for creating a blog plan. I think if you're gonna have a blog and you're blogging about your book, create a three month plan of how you're gonna do that. So that might look like this. You have one month and you are, every, every week you're publishing three posts and you're figuring out what those posts are and what dates you're publishing them. Hopefully you're publishing on a schedule, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. When you have a book and you create a blog around it, you want to know that every post you publish is, is related to that book and that it is also promoting the book at the same time. So it can always link back to a book sale. So the more books you write, as I said, the more books you sell. And what I want for you is for your blog to become this book production machine where it's constantly churning out books for you because that's gonna mean more money for you. And you can't sustain this if you're not making money. You all might have a message. You know, maybe you're uh, doing what I call writing for change. But whatever the messages that you have, whatever impact you're trying to make out there, you can't sustain that unless you have income. And there are people who are professional bloggers and they are making money from their blogs, big time. But it's usually not just from books. But again, the more books you write, the more books you sell. So you can turn that blog and your book into a money-making machine. And that's what we really want, is for you to make money with your blog. So how can you do that? You can spin your book ideas into products and services. Okay? Maybe you're going to coach. Maybe you're going to do seminars. Maybe you're going to do home study programs or certifications or masterminds or teleseminars and webinars and online classes. If you go look at any of my sites, you're going to see that I offer a ton of programs. I have membership sites. I have one-off programs that you can join with me for just you know a few weeks. I have things you can buy and do on your own, home study programs. I have a few templates all kinds of things and I speak this is how you make money from a book I even have a course called build a business around a book so this is how you earn a living selling books products and services from your blog my challenge to you is this to take even a month and write a blog post a day and a book or more in a year or less than a year if you don't want to write a post a day okay write a post once a week write a post twice a week you will write a book in a year or less and you can blog your way to a successful and lucrative career as an author. Thank you very much for watching. If you would like to see more videos by California Lawyers for the Arts, 
please like and subscribe to CLA's YouTube channel so we can provide full service live streaming programs soon. Our channel will be producing videos that cover all kinds of artistic, entertainment, and intellectual property legal issues. You can also find our videos on Facebook and Livestream.com.